Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. We're grateful to the Lord. I apologize. It's a little warm in here. But uh, nevertheless, you are in South Georgia. And it is almost the middle, the middle of May. So uh, it's no surprise that things kind of warm up a bit. Hallelujah. But uh, anyway, we do thank the Lord for another opportunity to come together around God's Word. Yes. Amen. How many of you glad to be here tonight? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you are as glad to be here as I am to see you, then we, we are all right. <laughs> I'm thrilled to see you guys tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Coming around God's Word. And, and as we were talking about, just kind of mentioned it earlier before some of you come in, that these Judaizers come in and they're trying to disrupt this newly planted church. Actually, this church had been in existence approximately 10 years. And, and Judaizers always come and remember this. That people always try to disrupt the thing when it's still in its infancy. My God. Because that's what it is most vulnerable. Yeah. Whatever that, this is why this is why sometimes whenever you're beginning to do a thing, you have to do it in silence. Amen. Because most of you put a pin in this, most of the time sabotage occurs in the early stages of things. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to learn to move in silence. Mm -hmm. You got to be we have to be real selective as to who you tell your plans to. That's right. You can't open your portfolio and tell everybody. Because right. everybody ain't going to be glad. Right. Even right. folks that come to church with you. Amen. Have first, I, I wish I didn't have to tell you that. So sometimes it's good to just learn to be quiet. How you doing? Oh, praise God. Praise God is God. good. And keep moving. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And to, instead of telling them, just, just, just show them. That's right. mm -hmm. Don't That's tell right. anything. Right. Hallelujah. Keep people guessing and keep them wondering. Hallelujah. So so Paul, was he, he was really uh, disturbed. That the people at Galatia were so soon removed mm -hmm. that they had allowed people to come in and and, and 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 preach things and say things and introduce concepts and things that was that's not in harmony with the gospel. Amen. Amen. That's happening a lot in the modern church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. A lot of stuff that's being taught, Lord. This is this is sad, and, and it hurts me to say this, but a lot of stuff that's coming across full, it's it's not of God. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn how to distinguish and how to discern right from wrong. Hallelujah, truth from error. Now, you remember this. I take it back to the garden just, just to kind of strengthen my point. God wanted Adam and Eve to stay away from the truth of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. God only wanted them to, 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 to partake of a certain tree in that garden and call it the tree of life. Right. Hallelujah. Partake of this tree. Because if you, go over and try to, if you go over and try to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to lose your discernment. In other words, we're not equipped on our own to tell right from wrong apart from God. God. In other words, God does not want us to, let me see how to say this without getting on y'all nerves. Uh, God doesn't want us to become, um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me squash it, let me say it another way. Uh, real intellect, real intelligence. Intelligence is not something you go to school go to, school to become. Okay. It's because you go to school, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm an advocate of school, because I don't put no premium on ignorance either. But so go to school, but understand this at the same time, that you don't go to school to become intelligent. Some of the most unintelligent people I've ever met are people that's got degrees behind their names. Right. So you don't go to school to become intelligent. You go to school to become informed. Yeah, right. Say informed. Yeah. Now what you do with that information, if you got intelligence, Intelligence takes information and, make, and turns it into good decisions. Right. Let me say it another way. Intelligence takes information and turns it into good life choices. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. So intelligence is not something that you study. Intelligence is discerned. Yes. Intelligence comes out of your relationship with God. How many, how many of you know when you come to Christ, when you're in Christ, you begin to see things differently? Amen. Right. Amen. The, the, the th things begin to be begin to take on a whole different a meaning and a yeah. whole different reflection, yeah. and you don't see things the way you used to see it. Amen. The stuff that used to bother you don't bother you as much. Amen. Come on, Amen. Hallelujah. There, there's something when, whenever whenever we let the Lord have His rightful place in our life. I told Queen before we left the house, as a baby, when you really when you really let the Lord reign in your heart, what He begins to do, He begins to simplify your life. Yes, He yeah. does. He begins to undramatize. You. Yes. After a while, when you're really in Christ, when you, whenever Christ really has his place in your heart, you get to a place where you are allergic to drama. Yeah, my God. I, can't, I don't do drama. Mm -hmm. Wherever drama is, I ain't. All right. Just like your father. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Yes. Confusion is a synonym of drama. Yeah, right. Because where there's drama, there's confusion. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. So we want to do things 
because the least amount of drama is necessary. Mm -hmm. Now, some things are unavoidable. Yeah. Why? Because you live in the world with other folks. That's right. That's right. And we have to deal with folks. Amen. And some folks are not as pleasant. Hallelujah. Come talk to Facebook. Some folks are not as pleasant. Hallelujah. So we have to ask God to give us the wisdom to know how to deal with folks. Because Jesus told Jesus in his prayer in the garden, uh, John chapter 17, the real Lord's prayer. He said, Father, don't take them out of the world. Now, we got to live in this world, so we got to live among these people. Yeah. But it takes wisdom to know how to navigate among people and at the same time retain your own sanity. Yeah, that's right. Y'all ain't gonna help me huh? Because sometimes folks will try your sanity. Yes. They try to make you think you the one crazy. Yes. Come on, y'all. Yeah. And they're the one, they're the one that's flaky, yeah. but they try to make you think you the one got the problem. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Go down again to verse number 7. And we're going to move on to verse number 7, Galatians 1. In our verse by verse treatise, verse by verse analysis, synopsis, amen. We're going to approach this verse by verse. You understand the, the first 10 verses basically is Paul, basically, uh, is basically it is his introduction. You do understand that the book of Galatians was actually a letter that was penned by Paul. Mm -hmm. I said it's a letter. Hallelujah. And the first 10 verses basically is his salutation. You know how you begin a letter, dear so and so, this is so and so. How y'all doing? Hope y'all, hope y'all cool. Everything, you know, whatever. So this is Paul's, this is Paul's uh, introduction here, his salutation, but also in put, uh, inside the salutation, there's a rebuke. Right. Because I'm, I'm amazed that you guys are, are so quick, so soon shifted off of. You let people come in and disrupt you, Hallelujah, and and they have caused you to start. Embracing thing that you didn't hear from us. Right. So Paul said that, 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 that I'm so I'm amazed, hallelujah, glory to God, that, that you let people come along and, and move you to another gospel. He said, I marvel. Back in verse six, I marvel that you're so that you're turning away so soon to another gospel. Then he says in verse seven, uh, verse the first part, he says, which is not enough. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. It is okay. not another. Now, this this is this really is an answer for people today in our day and time. There are people who will try to tell you that there are many paths to God. You just choose the way you want. You know, God, you know, the Buddhists, they ride, and the Krishna, you know, and, and, and the Hindus and the Buddhists and, and all this kind of stuff. Y'all look at me here, y'all. Everybody ain't right. No. Nope. I mean, everybody's not right. That's right. Uh, one thing about truth, let me tell you something about truth. <laughs> Contrary to what people think, truth is very narrow. Yeah. And the more and the more you walk in truth, the more narrow you become. That's right. Amen. 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 Which means that truth is not tolerable of some things. Mm -hmm. Some things just can't be tolerated. That's right. Because anything you tolerate, you can't change. Hallelujah. You can't change what you're not willing to confront. So there, so confrontation is unavoidable, but so it's not that we confront. The lesson is how do we confront? Yeah. We don't do it in a judgmental, vindictive way like I see some of these preachers do. Screaming <laughs> to the top of their voice, you're going to hell! You're not going to win anybody like that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you're not going to win anybody hitting the cross. You take an old dog, if you throw him a bone, you got a friend for life. Mm -hmm. But if every time he sees you kicking him and throwing a stick at him and whatever, even after a while, the dog going to get sent. Uh, she don't want me around. Okay, so so it's not it's not that we confront; it is how we confront, and we have to also choose our battles. Mm -hmm. You don't get involved in everything. That's right. Oh yeah, hallelujah. So Paul said that they, 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 they which is not really another. It's not an allos gospel. It's not another way to Christ. But there's only one way. So so any any time you try to introduce a new concept to the gospel, you just change the essence of the gospel. Mm -hmm. It is only it's no longer the gospel. Any time you try to add. Your opinions in with what God said, you just took away from what God said. Right. It's not enough. He said, but there are those that trouble you. Yes. Trouble came, hallelujah, to the, to the Galatians through false doctrine, hallelujah. Amen. Legalism always, it's always, un, it unsettles you. Sometimes you got people that are so on fire for God, they, 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 they're so, you know, oh, I thank God, hallelujah. And all of a sudden, some legalists come around. And they begin to introduce these strange winds. Hallelujah. That strange wind starts blowing. And all of a sudden, people who love God with all their heart, all of a sudden, they begin, they begin to be unsettled. Mm -hmm. That's true. Come on. They begin to be unsettled. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. False doctrine. The Bible calls it strange wind. 
We to be blown away with all kinds of wind and nothing. Paul told us through Timothy. He said in the last days, people will not endure sound doctrine. He said, but they would heed to themselves teachers. In other words, many times people will try to find people who will tell them what they want to hear at the expense of what they need to hear. Yeah. Itching ears. Itching ears is what he said. And I want to find somebody to soothe that itch. Yeah, put your little finger in there and scratch for it. Hallelujah. I, I, tell me what I want to hear. Tell me how great I am. Tell me I can serve the God. I, that I can serve the Lord and hold on to the world too. Because mm. you know people like that. You know, God, God understands. You know, he, he, he knows you're going to want to move in every now and then. He knows you want to take a drink. He knows you want to do this. He knows you want to hold hot. Mm. All right. God, God understands. God understands. Mm. So, so it creates a condition called confusion. And it's the unsettling of the soul. Hallelujah. This Paul said there's some of the trouble in that seventh verse. Trouble carries the idea it means to shake back and forth. Mm. You got people that vacillate. Mm. Some folks can't even tell you what they believe. Because you got all kinds of concepts that you're trying to mix up. Jesus. I love listening to certain people. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I, I listen to all kinds of people. But you have to learn how to separate what's right and what's wrong, right. what's truth and what error. Right. Right. Hallelujah! I listen. To, I go back sometimes back in the back in the sixties, late fifties and early sixties, and listen to some of the speeches of Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. I listen to him. A lot of what the man said was true, yeah. Yeah. right? But I don't get my gospel from him. All right. All right. All right. That's right. Hallelujah. I don't get my gospel from him. Right. Hallelujah. Because I know God can use anybody he chooses to use right. to better the life of his people. That's right. Hallelujah. There's a man in the Bible in the book of Daniel, a fellow named Cyrus. Uh -huh. Cyrus wasn't even, he wasn't even a follower of God. Matter of fact, Cyrus didn't even believe in Jehovah. But God called Cyrus my anointing. Right. Isn't that crazy? Wow. See, you see, we, we limit God because we think God can only come one way. Here, this man Cyrus. That God raised him up. Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus. Hallelujah. Daniel went to the, uh, not, that, uh, not Daniel, but well, Daniel too, but, but Nehemiah went to Cyrus and showed him in the prophecies that God mentioned him by name about 150 years before he was even born. Mm. <laughs> that I'm going to raise up a man, this is his name, and this is what he's going to do. Mm. Ooh, y'all not hearing this yet. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is God can use whoever he wants to use. God can bless you. God can use people that don't even believe in God. Right. But he can use people to bless you yes. and position you and put you in places. Hallelujah. He can give you houses you didn't build. Come on now. Right. He can give you venues you didn't plan. Right. Hallelujah. Right. That's, what God, that's what God's going to yes. do. Some of that stuff can happen for a new beginning. Yeah. Yeah. My God. Folks don't even know God. Watch, watch how God begin to move God. on people. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Sometimes a lot of stuff what God's giving to do for this church, it ain't gonna be through church folks. All right, All right now, all right. Say so. I'm taking the limitations off my pen. Yes, oh, I'm gonna sing that song. Any way you bless me, Any way you be satisfied. Whoever you want to use. Hallelujah. New beginnings got a Cyrus out there somewhere. Yes. Not only did God, not only did Cyrus, King Cyrus, allow Nehemiah to go back and rebuild the wall, but he also funded the prophet. Come on now, right? Let him go, gave him leave to go, gave him the legal right to go, and gave him the money to buy the supplies. Oh, Lord, we're outside of that. Glory to God. All right. Paul said they were coming, they're going to pervert the gospel. To pervert means to transform something into something opposite. Yeah, to take something that's supposed to be good and turn, it means to change the nature of the thing. Anything you add to the gospel changes the nature of it. Yeah, Lord. How many know, how many know the, 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 the gospel does not need anything added to it? Right. All the gospel needs is for somebody to be bold enough to stand up and preach. Yes. All the gospel needs is proclamation. Yes. Yes. I love this. Hallelujah. When you look at the Bible, did you know the Bible is not the explanation of God? No. The Bible is the declaration of God. Yes, sir. It declares it, but it's unexplained. That's right. Why? Because God can't be explained. Can't be. You know why God can't be explained? Because he has to be revealed. That's right. You can know things that don't know how you know. You just know that you know. Because yes. knowing is the function of the spirit. We're going to get into that later in some of our Sunday morning teaching. This is separating the spirit from the soul because according to the word, they're not the same. All right, hallelujah. So we got to 
we got to be a discerner of the very thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Bible says the word of God is quick. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. It is a discerner. It, is, it separates soul from spirit. Separates bone from marrow. The word of God gets down to know where the real you are. Where the, where the, the real you are. Yeah. I thought to say you is, but that's not such a word. Sometimes I get, sometimes I slip in my South Georgia. Y'all come on now. All right. Glory to God. They pervert the gospel. They turn it into the very opposite of this original design. And the reason why the devil does that, hallelujah, is so that he can distort the thinking. Mm -hmm. And try to get you thinking that it's something that is not. The gospel is supposed to be simple. Just like when the people got into that trouble in the wilderness. Whenever they begin to murmur and complain, God sent snakes in the camp. We yeah, read that. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and Moses cried out to God. They cried out to God. And God gave Moses a remedy. Right. God's got a solution. He has a remedy for the snake bite. Yeah. Hallelujah. God says, I want you to take an object, take that same snake. Hallelujah. And I want you to take a bra take brass, and I want you to shape it into that same thing that crawled into the camp. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want you to take, because that snake is a, is, is a symbol of something. Right. I want you to take that snake, put him on a pole. And just lift him up before the people. And just tell the people all they got to do is look. look yeah. If you just look, you'll live. And yeah. some of those people were too stiff to look. To look. If you just look. So Jesus come along in John chapter 3. He said, and I, if I be lifted up. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Yeah. And if I be lifted up. We thought he was talking about a praise and worship song. Yeah. He's not talking about being lifted up in hallelujah. He's talking about being lifted up on a cross. Yeah. And if I be lifted up, if you look to that cross, if you look to Calvary, yes, sir. Hallelujah. I shall forever lift my eyes toward Calvary. Yes, sir. To view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous yes, sir. the grace that caught my falling soul. Hallelujah. He looked beyond my falls. Yes, he did. saw my need. Hallelujah. They tried to pervert the gospel. There is a deliberate effort in the land today to pervert this gospel. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is not one of many ways. Y'all, right. way. anybody come tell you this? Well, oh, so God, it's okay to serve God, but if you really want to be spiritual, you need to burn you some sage. If you really want to serve God, you need to incorporate this into your daily meditation. Come on, y'all. And, and, they, and, and, and they take a little practice. They think it's harmless. Then. I'm going to mess with y'all now. But a little practice called yoga. Yes, then. And, 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 you think that's harmless. Uh oh, look at y'all looking at ah. But do you know every one of those yoga poses uh -huh. has a meaning in the realm of the spirit? All right. You yeah. know that? It's, you, you know, it's more to it than just stretching your body. That's right. Let me leave that alone. That's too heavy. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. But you got to be careful about just blindly following stuff. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to be careful about that kind of stuff and all kind of things. Because if you're not careful, you'll start putting your... Now listen to me. I'm not against anybody getting on a mat stretching out. Stretch all you want. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm trying to get out of there. Stretch all you want to. But don't turn it into to the... You got, I just want you to see the root behind things. Yeah, there's, right, there's, right. There's, there's, there's something behind it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Come on, we. Okay, I'm going to leave that, leave that alone. Yeah, so, hallelujah. On, we, just got, we just got to know what we're doing. That's right. we, we, we're just in that day now. You got to, we, we can't just do stuff. Don't just do stuff because everybody else doing it. That's right. That's right. Just because everybody's doing it does not mean that it's right. Amen. Don't give stuff a pass because it's being practiced by the masses. That's right. Somebody mm -hmm. say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Different gospel is no gospel, is no gospel at all. Again, there is no alternative to the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is mutually exclusive to any other gospel. Hallelujah. This gospel is exclusive, which means it's unlike anything else in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. There is nothing that can compare with, with, our, with, with, with our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Absolutely yeah. nothing. There is no compatibility. Hallelujah. This is why the Bible, this is why the crime the scripture is come out from among them and be ye separate. Yeah. This is why Jesus said you can't take a new garment, hallelujah, an old garment, and, and, uh, and put a patch on it. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't put a new patch on an old garment. Hallelujah. Yeah. All you're going to do is make your tear bigger. Hallelujah. He said you can't put new wine into old wine skins because an old wine skin cannot contain new wine. Yeah. You, if you're going to have new wine, you got to have a new skin. Yeah. Right. 
The idea is, is as the wine ferments, it's going to stretch that skin. And if that skin is old, it's going to burst. Yes. Yes. So God is not trying to put his way into our traditional ways. Come on now. It won't work. We've got to come out from among it. Yeah. When God said lay it aside, we've got to lay it aside. Yeah. Help, help me, Jesus. Yes, help us, Lord. Hallelujah. We live in a day with such theological latitude that people can distort the gospel into something other than the New, the New Testament gospel. All kind of stuff. You see all kind of stuff in the church. Yes. And it's being passed. And that, that's God. No, it's not. Mm. If it ain't about Christ, if it ain't about Jesus, it ain't about nothing. I don't care who's saying it. Hallelujah. And then Paul, then, then, then Paul goes to go to verse 8. He says, but even if we, watch this. Paul says, even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you. Paul, in essence, Paul says, even if us, even if later on, he said, even if later on I come back mm -hmm. and tell y'all what I told you before was wrong. Uh -oh. Then he strengthened it. He said, even if an angel from heaven, watch this. Paul establishes the fact that he was the one who first preached Christ to the Galatians. His defense of the gospel was preached to was such that he said, even though we, Paul, and any other brethren that was with him, if anybody come back later on, hallelujah, and try to tell you something else, or even if an angel from heaven. Yeah. I want y'all to, 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 to see the levity. I want you to see the heaviness of those words. Hallelujah. Even if an angel pop in your room tonight. That's right. Mm. Because the founder of Mormonism, a fellow by the name of Joseph Smith. Right. You know how, you know how he started Mormonism? He had a vision. Mm -hmm. And in this vision, he saw two beings. Light. Clothed. Blind in light. In the natural mind, you would think that's God. Yes. But the Bible says Satan can appear as an angel of light. Yes. Just because, listen to me, just because you see a bright light does not mean you see in God. That's right. Because right. mm -hmm. Satan knows how to disguise and knows how to appear. Mm -hmm. Paul said, but I'm telling you, hallelujah, even if we come back later on, if, if, if we, hallelujah, come back and preach to you a gospel contrary to the one that we preach to you, let him be. The Greek word is anathema. A curse. Let it be a curse. If anybody come in here, hallelujah, and try to tell you something other than Jesus Christ and him crucified, hallelujah, that there's another way to God, you ain't got to believe that Jesus stuff. God's got another way. Paul said, let it be a curse. Yeah. And this is interesting because I want you to notice the hypothetical scenario that Paul uses when he references an angel. Mm -hmm. He said, even if an angel come mm. and preach something different, He's highlighting the seriousness of the matter because the idea is sometimes people can come and try to use their high status in society oh. and use it as an influence. That's right. No, that's right, because so-and-so said. Because yes. they are a person of great reputation. Yes, he's, a right. person, he's, a, he's a person that seemed to be a rep, or he or she is a person of reputable character, so there must be some <laughs> weight in what they're saying. Mm. But Paul said, I don't care who said it. If it leads you away from Jesus Christ, it didn't come from God. That's right. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. College professor, doctor, lawyer, whoever. If they tell you something other than Christ, don't receive it. That's right. This is why, and I'm, and I'm on Facebook Live. This is why when these, when these, when these, when these fringe religious groups come to my house, mm -hmm. let me be clear. All right. I'm not talking about people, but I'm talking about these groups. You know them as Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. You know them as Mormons. Right. You know them as Hebrew Israelites, all this kind of stuff. When those groups come every now and then, they come up on your porch. Yeah. Hallelujah. So my queen, no, she's in, she's hang on, let me get my husband for you. <laughs> and she comes, number one, she knows her husband ain't going to let him in the house. He ain't coming in here with that. And I'm going to stop you on the porch. And number two, I'm going to control the conversation. All right. All right. You thinking you coming to witness to me, but you coming to be witness to me. Right. And I don't do it in a big, arrogant type yeah. way. Hallelujah. And I don't claim to know everything, but I know what I know. Amen. Amen. We got to know this word. That's it. Listen to me. This is why this is why what we're doing here tonight is so important. That's so right. that you become rooted and grounded to know to know not just what you believe, but you got to know why you believe. Yes, it. Sir. So why? So that you can effectively defend it. Yes, 
It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a study called, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an activity called apologetics. Yes. To know how to defend. Peter said, Peter said, sanctify the Lord in your heart and be ready to give every person an answer yes, sir. for the reason of the hope that lies within you. Why, why, why you look like you why are you always talking about disease? You got to be ready to give an answer. That's right. Mm-hmm. And some of these people, some of these people come to your house, they know scriptures real well. Yeah, they do. Yes, they, they do. do. Or they'll quote you under the I'm telling you, they yes. quote scripture now. Yeah. Oh, because sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes when we get together and get to talking, they'll be quoting us, well, you know, the Bible said thus and so. But you see, I have to always take them back to context. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you can lift the scripture out of context right. and make it say anything. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's for any book. You take any book. Hallelujah. I, when, 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 if you read a novel, if you read a story, amen, you can't just jump in the middle of the book and get what they're saying. Right. Right. You've got to go back. And start from the beginning, and whatever you read in the middle, you got to read it in the context of what was said at the beginning. Hallelujah. Because if you listen out of this context, you're going to end up with a pretext. Right. Let me say it another way. If you listen out of context, you're going to end up with a con. Right, right. The text for con. You know what a con is, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's what somebody say, say con. Con. You, you, anybody for me with anybody for me with the term con artist? Right. A con artist. Is a person who specializes mm-hmm. in taking things out of context yes. and make you believe stuff that ain't right. so. That's right. a con artist. Because mm-hmm. con artists, believe it, believe it or not, most of the time, a, a, a good con artist, most of the time he's a student of psychology. Right. Because he has studied human behavior. Yes. And he knows what people like. That's mm-hmm. right. He has studied the human predicament, human behavior. That way he knows how to appeal to his prey. Mm-hmm. P-R-E-Y. Right. Right. Take everything you want to hear. Yes, sir. Next thing you know, you, you next thing you know, you're at the bank if they're not your account. Mm-hmm. Sure enough. Come on here, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. So this is why Paul used this hypothetical scenario. He said, even if an angel, mm-hmm. a person, you know, not, not just a not just a being with wings. Mm-hmm. He can also talk about somebody of high status mm-hmm. or somebody of perceived authority. If a Billy Graham type character comes in, right, right. somebody who you know, somebody who has the you know America's pastor, who has a you know somebody who has you know who has yes. spoke yes. clout, so to speak. Yes. If they come in and tell you something other than Christ, throw it out the window. Mm. Amen. Amen. Okay, who it is? Hallelujah. So in summary, the eighth verse, Paul is telling us it's a warning. It's a warning to us believers to be cautious and discerning. When it comes to teachings about the gospel, the message of the gospel is crucial and it has eternal ramifications. Yes. Yes. Come on, y'all. This is serious business. Yes, it is. Your soul is in the balance. My soul is in the balance. Yes. This is why every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, I get up and teach and preach. Sister Say, shall I do it with fear and trembling? I said, Lord, don't let me get this wrong. Mm-hmm. Because I know some people believe stuff because they heard me say it. Right. Pastor Tom said, so let's have some validity to it. And whenever you're teaching, you know, whenever you are in, whenever you are an instructor, whenever you are a teacher, you have the power, you have the ability to sway minds. Right. right, right. And you shape an opinion. Yes. Hallelujah. With those of you that are teaching, you're in, this, you're in the classroom, them little, them little ones sitting there listening, looking you right in the face. And, 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 you, and, and they're captivated by your words. Yes, yes. You are shaping opinions. Yes, right. You are swaying minds. Some of them folks, some of them little babies will go home because you told them stuff and they hold, they're hold basing their life on what you said. Yeah, that's, that's why James says, be not many masters. In other words, everybody should teach. That's right. Because teaching, teachers are going to be judged by a more strict principle. Yes, sir. I'm always amazed that people, a lot of people get caught up in the glamour and the glitz. Mm. I think if people really get a hold of this, Everybody won't be running to the pool and talking, I'm a prophet. They don't want it. I avoided this for years. I, Lord, I know. My mama told me when I first came to the Lord, my mom said, Son, God's call. I see it on you. I said, No, mama, not me. Ooh. I saw how them folks did the other pastors. Oh, no. Not me. 
I think I told them folks. I don't know who he is. <laughs> this man coming to church smiling and preaching to folks that he know hate him. Yeah. And he's standing smiling and serving. And I'm saying to myself, how can he do that? Yeah. Don't he know they don't talk? Yeah, he knows. Yeah, he knows. Because the Lord let him know. Yeah. But he yeah. still yeah. know how to treat people. That's right. That's <laughs> because he refused to let their hatred become his dysfunction. Right. Can you love people that hate you? Come on now. Yeah. I mean, for real, though. We shake our head. Yeah, I'm talking about for real, though. For real. <laughs> People you know that lie on you right. and have run you. Hallelujah. Your yeah. name in their mouth, your name is in their mouth like a bad tooth at the dentist's office. Of our profession today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you, you, they, they have called you everything and then time to get in your presence. He, 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 ah, God bless you. Uh -huh. And you know they done lied on you. Yeah. You know people looking at you funny because of something they said. Right. Hallelujah. Many times people won't take the time to get to know you for themselves. They, they, people have a tendency to size you up based on something they heard about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But can we still treat people right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. So Paul, he reiterates again. He says, Verse 9, we're going to be doing pretty good. He says, as we have said before, so now I say again. I don't have to tell you about the law of double enunciation. I mean, there is, there is no literary way to scream. Right. So in order to put emphasis in literary meaning, uh, terminology, you got to do it with repetition. Say it again. You got to say it, you got to write it again. So Paul said, I'm saying it again. As we've stated before, so now I'm telling you again. If anyone, anyone, I don't care who they are, I don't care if it's Bishop Tutu. Yeah, it was a Bishop Tutu. Yeah. I don't care who it is. If anybody come to you, he's head of the denomination, headquarters, he's God's man, God's man of faith and power. They like to say stuff like that. You know, I don't care who it is. If he comes to something other than other, contrary to what you've heard, let him be cursed. Yes. Let it be under God's curse. Yes. Again, this verse 9 echoes and reinforces the warning mm -hmm. that Paul gave us in the previous verse mm -hmm. about false teachings and false gospel. The world is full of it. Yes. <laughs> People are going around lying in the name of Jesus. Yes. <clears throat> and we got to be careful about these prophets. Mm. So-called. So-called. Self-called. Anytime, this me. you can Listen, look, look, look right there. Anytime somebody tells you that you got to pay for prophecy, that's a charlatan. That's not a prophet of God. Anytime you go to a church and they got $100 lines, $200 lines, if you get in the $500 line, you got a person, you got a, you got a private audience with the prophet. The devil is alive. That's manipulative tactics, that's manipulation, and it has no place in the house of God. Somebody said, well, Pastor Tom, why come y'all take up? Why y'all do offerings the way y'all do it? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me sidetrack this for a minute so you can see why we do what we do here at New Beginnings. Right. Can I take time to do that for you? Come on, right. you get your Bible. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Let's, let me watch this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Show you, let me show you why we do what we do. The Lord took me there one day and changed and revolutionized my thing. 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Chapter 16. Look what he said. Look at verse 1. Okay? Yeah. First Corinthians 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the first few words? Now, now. now what? The, the, collection. the collection. What is what is collection talking about? Offerings. Offerings. He said, now concerning the collection for the saints. Uh -huh. He said, as I directed the churches of same folks we read about. Paul said, just like I told them, I'm going to tell you too. Because this is the guidelines. Look at verse 2. On the what? Let each one of you do what? There's nothing to him about 10%, nothing about 20%, nothing about 50%. He said, just lay aside. Whatever God put in your heart to give, I'll never tell you a certain amount. Y'all ain't gonna help me now. He said on the first day of the week. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Sunday. What day we come to church? Sunday. Sunday. He said when, when Sunday come, this is how I want you to do it. 
Each one of you is to put aside and save. I'm in the new, I'm in the new international. I'm in the new American standard. Let me get the King James. Something. Hallelujah. Let me get King James. He said, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. How? God have, God have As God has prospered him. This is what I want. This is how I want the collection done. Lay aside something based on how God has prospered you. If it's a dollar, if it's a hundred dollars, if it's a thousand dollars, you know what you're doing before the Lord. I ain't looking in your pocketbook. Ain't none of my cotton picking business. That's right. He said, You knew it as God had prospered you. He said, And there was. There'll be no gathering. Read that last part again. That there be no gatherings when I come. Paul is asking, he's saying, watch this, Lord Jesus. When I come, I'm coming to preach. I ain't coming to raise money. He said, I want you to have it already taken care of. Hallelujah. The Lord instructed me years ago, put a box at the door. Give them all up, they can give, go on and come. Don't you stop the flow of my service and start talking about money. All right. All right. I'm on Facebook Live. Hallelujah. I've been in services where, where, where the Spirit of the yes. Lord moving, Holy Ghost falling like rain, and they cut the praise. We're going to receive the offering. And the Holy Ghost fly out like a, like a dove. He bleeds in. You feel the presence lift. Yes. Why did the presence lift? Because the emphasis has shifted. My God. That's Jesus. Oh, That's sad. Okay. That's in your Bible. I didn't make that up. Is it in your Bible? He said, there be no gatherings when I come. He said, there be no gatherings when I come. When I come, I want that already taken care of. Go ahead, go ahead and lay it aside. So in the, during the week when you pray in your prayer time, Lord, what would you have me to give today? And when the Lord speaks that, if he tells you to give a tithe, that's up to you. But don't feel compelled to do it. Come on. That's right. That's right. My God, my God. If you got to choose to give the church something to feed your children, pastor saying this, feed, feed your, your children. children. Right. Feed your children. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jesus. This is God's house. And so far, God has, he has provided for us. Yes, he right. has. Ooh, oh, what no camera? I tell you some stuff. How God is going to do. But we're going to talk about it. We all camera. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God has done some things. Yeah. Glory He's, yes, but when you follow God's way, yes, yes. Yes. Follow his way. when you yes. do it the way He tells you to do it, do He says there'd be, that, 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 that be no. I don't know why no, churches don't God. read this part. My God. Huh. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> I see. I've been in services and people hurt, rush you to praise. Come on, guys. Go ahead on the door. Well, that's everybody, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it. Everybody stand up and testify in one voice. One voice. One voice. Why? Wow, because we got to get past that part. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Now, look. And then they get to that money. <laughs> and then that thing comes. <laughs> and why they watch this? And while they're collecting the money, they're, they're counting. I want to help you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if it's not the amount they had in mind, we're going to go around go go again. Y'all, I'm on camera. I see that is not of God. Go ahead. It's not. Come on. The truth you don't make merchandise of people. That's right. And God ain't pleased with it. Go ahead. Tell him he's not pleased with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God bring out hallelujah before I start manipulating people and doing people the way I see preachers do, folks. I'll eat cornbread and drink water the rest Come of my on, life. Sir. Right. I refuse to do it. Right. Manipulating tactics. Sir, yeah. we need to cook it. It's the truth, y'all. It's just the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> he said, I'll help a buy a meal. He said, <laughs> and when I come, Whosoever you shall have approved. In other words, Paul said, I want you to go ahead and bring it out ahead of time. Who will be over this before I come? Yes, right. sir. He says, so that when I come, I'm going to go to the person you've already approved. That's right. right. Appreciate and we'll receive the offer. That's that way. Right. But we're not going to stop the service and do it. Praise the Lord. Right. Yes. I just want to Now, that, that's just one of them. Yes. I got a whole lot more stuff I'm going to give. Yes, I'm sir. Stuff that's happening in modern churches that grieves the spirit. Go ahead, teach us. We have to talk about it. Come on, Hallelujah! I'm telling you, I ain't trying to be popular because right. teaching like this makes you very unpopular. Unpopular. 
Because you got it. Because she's because now nah, you're messing with you. You you yeah, hallelujah. On my way to church, I was listening to a man of God and he got in my spirit. He said, This is called disruptive thinking. Come on. Ooh, we got to get outside that box. That's right. Come on, outside the box. Outside, outside the box. box. Uh, when my baby was little, we used to get in the middle of the floor, and there was a there was a little kitty show on TV back in the day called Out of the Box. <laughs> Tony and Billy. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And it's and, and Sierra had me on the floor with her. Out of the box. Out of the box. You know, singing that little song and playing that stuff. And I'm so, because I don't work a 12 hour shift all night long, so tired I can't holler C straight, but I'm going to get out on the floor and play with my baby. All right. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we got to get out of the box. Get out of that religious box That's so right. we can see the truth because tradition has blinded the church. Blinded the church. Right. And we think we're doing stuff that pleases God and it doesn't. He does not do it. That's the right. Spirit of God is grieved in a lot of these places. Yes. Because things are happening that he never sanctioned. Mm. Oh, I know I've got some folks mad with me now. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> But I don't really can't. I don't take it back because it's in the book. Amen. And if I can't substantiate what I'm doing by the book, throw it out. Right. Okay, who said it? Hmm. Hallelujah. This is why we do what we do. Right. Now we did we did something different last Sunday because of the scenario. But you, you but, but you never see service interrupted here so we can receive an offering. All right. All right. All right. That's not how we do stuff here. Right. And I'm telling you, the previous church that I passed, whenever the Lord shifted that thing. Hallelujah. That same Sunday, the offerings triple. Yeah. Mm. All right. Instead of you trying to milk the people, come on, y'all. I'm going to hit by that king. Give me $50. Come on, I'm, I'm going I'm to start off. Yeah. I'm going to get it. Don't you know what you're giving between you and the Lord? That's it, right? The Bible says, I don't know why I'm over here, but the Bible says, hallelujah. He says, we are, even when it comes to arms and doing things, he said, we got to do it in a way that your left hand don't even know what your right hand is doing. So why is it the modern church want to blow horns in front of what they're doing? Yes, God, I gave $100. And? And that's right. And then some of them have the audacity, hallelujah, to read off the names. Ooh, so and so, fifty dollars. Right. He can so and so hundred dollars. Right. No. Y'all laughing because y'all seen this. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the next stuff they give you, and the rest of them. I don't know. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not trying to be abrasive. No, it is true. not my intention to just be confrontational yeah. without a cause. That's right. But I know sometimes speaking the truth has a shock value. Yes, right. And my, my concern is that the shock value has, has, has <laughs> lost its place in the church. Pe- pe- it's, it's amazing that people can do stuff now and don't give it a second thought. No, there's right. no shock. That's right. That's we right. ought to be something in you ought to, there ought to be a righteous indignation that rises up in you when you see the wrong thing done. That's right. You ought to be disturbed when something ain't right. That's right. That's right. And instead of being disturbed, we give the stuff a pass. Then we wonder why people won't come to church. Amen. Amen. You know why folks ain't coming to church? Oh, it's, it's a lot of, you, they see a lot of stuff. Even the people in the yeah. street know, man, ain't them. And most of them tell you, them folks just want your money. Yeah. <laughs> why? Because that's the energy that we've portrayed. Yeah. And then try to put people in hell if they don't give. Right. I had a sister, I ain't going to call home names, so I don't want nobody to know who I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Talked to me and my queen one day. She was she was distraught. She was in disarray because her pastor had told her that all of her finances was on the curse because she didn't give to their church. I say, sister, no disrespect to your leader, but he lied to you. You not you in Christ? Yes, sir. You're not on the curse. How can you be in Christ and be cursed? All right. All right. Hallelujah. That's right. There is no condemnation None. to do that in Christ Jesus. That's right. Your money didn't buy your salvation. That's your money can't keep your salvation. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's leave that alone. I, 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 for now. For now. For now. For now. For now. For now. He said, let them be a curse. If anybody bring anything else, Paul is emphasizing the importance, verse 9, the importance of remaining true to the gospel that the Galatians had received from him. He is absolutely making it crystal clear that any deviation from this message should be rejected and condemned. I don't care who said it. 
Yes. That's right. That's right. Okay, who it was? Don't believe it. Don't you know what God has done for you, yes. don't you? Yes. You know how God is, how you look, look at your own life. Yes. And see how God has shifted things in your life. Yes. How, look, look, at, look, at, look at the shift that has taken place in your own mind. Look how God has done. So you mean to tell me you're going to begin in the spirit and now you're going to be perfected in the flesh? No. No, no. And this is the argument Paul is making. You let these Judaizers come in here and they are disrupting the process of faith. They're trying to get you out of faith and get you into the area of performance and behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a strong warning again to believers to remain steadfast in the true gospel and be able to be able to listen to me, fam, look at me, fam. Be able to recognize when folk lying to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We got to know when folk lying. That's yeah. right. You ain't got to call them a liar. There's no, there's no winning line. There's no winning line. That's a little crazy. I call him a lie. You, you lying. Hmm. No, I won't do that arrogantly, but like I said, I don't know everything, but I know what I know. Amen. I know what I do know. Hallelujah. And I'm certain about what I know, you know? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Did, did y'all still got, the, did, did I send y'all these notes? I got them in Galatians chapter one. Y'all got those notes? Yeah. Anybody who don't have them, I'll send them to you. Hallelujah. Make sure you read those notes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, listen. Glory to God. I got some more stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to load your email up. Hallelujah. I'm going to send you tomorrow, Lord. I'm going to send you the notes for this coming Sunday's message. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, hallelujah. So now, so now let's go to verse 10. We're doing good. Man. A, I got a three-verse night here. <laughs> well, you don't have to, well, these kind of, the, the, the way these are actually written, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time with them because they're pretty clear cut. They are. Yeah. Hallelujah. So when you get to verse 10, so now Paul here now saying, for do I now persuade men of God? Uh -huh. Or do I seek to please men? Nope. For if I still please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Now, here, here's what's happening. These, these Judaizers, watch this, because you understand most of the churches at Galatia were Gentiles. Right. So now these Judaizers are trying to say, this is what they were accusing Paul of. Paul did not persuade men of God. This is what they're accusing. The accusation is Paul has trimmed this message so that he can appeal to his audience. Mm -hmm. Paul, he knew, he knew. See, now one thing, one thing these Judaizers knew, they knew that Paul was well-versed in Judaism. Right. So now you can't take the law and fool Paul. No. Because Paul perhaps had a PhD of his day. Paul was being groomed. You go back in the early chapters of the book of Acts, you'll see again where Paul was being groomed by the, uh, by the Sanhedrin leader named Gamaliel, or Gamaliel, or however you want to pronounce his name. Gamaliel. Paul was being groomed to become the next leader of the Sanhedrin. So Paul knew the law. He knew it upside, backwards, upside to right, down to the left. He knew everything. He knew the in and outs of the law. So y'all can't come in here talking about law. So this is why God had to deal with Paul the way he dealt with him. This is why when the Lord, when the Lord appeared to Paul, he did not, in, in the initial stages of Paul's conversion and Paul receiving the revelation of the gospel, this is why God did not let Paul go and consult with Peter in them. Right. And I'm going to tell you why. Let me just make it clear for you. Because the first 10 years of the gospel, Peter didn't need most of that ministry around Jerusalem. They didn't even think Gentiles would be saved. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you know Peter was reluctant about going to Cornelius' house? Right. He didn't want to go down there. Okay. Cornelius was an Italian. Mm -hmm. And Peter didn't think, you know, oh no. Mm -hmm. So they had an all-Jewish audience because they thought that the gospel was only for the Jews. Right. Mm -mm. There are some people today who only think the gospel is for a certain group of people. Right. And they won't even try to go to other folks. So this is why in the early of Paul's first few years, the Lord didn't let him go to Jerusalem and consult and talk with the other apostles because if he had went among Peter and John and James, if he had went among them at first, they, 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 it was a good chance they would have untwisted it out of him. Yeah. Mm. So God took him and hid him out for three years. Mm -hmm. I had a similar experience. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I had a similar experience. 
God hid me out of my room for several years. Amen. Had my Bible open. Many times the pages of my Bible would be wet with my tears. I didn't know what God was doing in those early stages, but I'm seeing it now. Yes, sir. God was putting his word in me. Getting me prepared for what I'm doing now. All those years ago, as an 18-year-old boy, two months before my 19th birthday, I got born again. Yes. Holy Ghost changed me. And God put me on my face for years. And I was driven to that word. And I went all the way through the Bible. All 66 books. And the Lord, he, he helped me. I, I didn't, I'm not against seminary. Please don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not against anybody going to seminary school. That's fine. But God, I, I got the same experience in that, in that regard what Paul had. God taught me the word. Yes, he did. And he's teaching me the word. I don't know it all. I have oh, so, man, I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface. Mm. There's so much more. There's so much more. But God poured this thing into me. And I would hit, and I would question elders and bishops. And they would, and I had one of them tell me, well, you just do it because I said it. Because <laughs> I wanted them to explain to me why we was doing stuff that the word condemned while we were doing this. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, that, this is our denomination, and oh, that's the way we do things. But the Bible said, "Don't do that." Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I was questioning stuff. Yes, mm -hmm. I go to these conferences, to these deacons meetings, different things, and I would hear back room chatter. Go mm -hmm. And I was questioning stuff. Yes. Hold on, that, 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 that ain't right. Why are we doing this? Well, this is our way. Mm -hmm. So instead of me standing there causing a ruckus. Right. I don't believe in causing ruckus. Instead of standing there causing the ruckus, you know what I did? Left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know we hiding behind that. <laughs> you don't see that in church. That's how you do in church. <laughs> you your power in your bag. I don't you think we hiding behind that. I say you can't hide all yeah. this. <laughs> but I quietly left. What you do? I had to get out of there. Because I could no longer, because when I joined the church, when I joined that church, I agreed to be ruled and governed by the rules and the regulations of the church. Well, I got to the point where I could not no longer agree to be ruled and governed by the regulations of the church. So instead of standing there causing the ruckus, I didn't even know where I was going, but I had to get out of there. Because my spirit, but you ever sit in church and just get grieved? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sit in the church and say, Lord, this ain't right. Mm -hmm. This is not right. And the overemphasis on money, money. and, and overemphasis on power yes. and control yes. and, and people, you do it because I say it. I'm the uh, uh, yes, titles and I'm the bishop. Yes. And, and you don't want to get a, you don't want to get a title in some of these churches because whenever you get a title in the church, your senses go up. Yes, that's right. Okay. Huh? Come on, sesame. Show me the word sesame in the Bible. Don't go look it ain't there. That come out of headquarters. I said, Lord, what about what these Man, folks read when they wrote this stuff? We got to stay with the word, kid. Stay with the word. That's right. Stay with the word. Keep, 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 keep posting that word. Yeah. Stay with the word. Yeah. Don't deviate from the word. That's it. Hallelujah. Jesus said, the word that I speak. I got five minutes. John 6, 63. He said, the word that I speak, they are yeah. spirit. They are not. You know how you tell when the Holy Ghost is moving? Listen to what they say. Yeah. Don't, 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 get, don't get caught up in the behavior. And the theatrics right, and, right. and, 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 and the emotional stimulation. That is that ain't indication of the spirit. That's right. That's right. Listen to what they're saying. Watch what they teach. Watch the life. When the Bible said, try the spirit. What spirit is he talking about? Word. John Word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Judge, I'm telling you, I don't care who is who is free. Even Pastor Tom, bring your Bible and bring your brain. All right. All right. Don't check your brain at the door. I'm just going to accept it because Pastor said it. No! A thousand times no. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. The Bereans. They check, they search the scripture. 
Paul came and talked to the Bereans and checked Paul out. Yeah. I don't care who you say you are. We're going to check the scripture and make sure you're right. telling us the truth. That's right. That's right. That's right. A lot of times people, you can tell a lot of times when people get ready to try to manipulate you, what they do, first of all, they work you up into an emotional frenzy. Yeah, that's right. And whenever you're all emotional stimulated, that's when you're most susceptible to fall for error. That's that right. Right. That's that's right. Right. If I can work you up into an emotional frenzy, hallelujah. You're so caught up in how you feel. Now you ain't thinking. I, I love dancing in the shop. We're going to be, hallelujah. I believe in getting emotionally involved. I believe in getting emotional. Hallelujah. Yes. But not at the expense of truth. That's right. That's right. So Paul here saying, he's not answering the allegations in verse 10, that he trimmed his message in order to gain a following. There are folks that are blaming, that there are folks that are blaming your pastor about that. Uh-huh. Y'all don't believe that to me. There's some folks that are saying, oh, Bill is doing it because he tried to get him a follower. Well, if I'm trying to get a follower, why would I be teaching like this? Mm-hmm. If I was trying to just get folk to, to just come follow, don't you think I would be going with the status quo? Right. Mm-hmm. Come on, y'all. That's right. don't, you know, don't you know if I were to just get a follower, I would get into ear tickling mm-hmm. yeah. and tickling fences and saying what folk want to hear? Mm-hmm. No, I'm telling folk to come out of their denominationalism. Hallelujah. I'm not telling, watch this, isms. I'm against ism. Not against, please hear what I'm saying. Facebook, hear what I'm saying. I am not against people, right. but I am against isms, whatever form it takes. Because anytime you get denominationalism, demon nations. <laughs> God never, read my lips, God never started a denomination. No, he was right. No, he did Denominations came out of the minds of men. Yeah. A lot of churches, they got mad when they went. When they were, they split, went down the road, started their own yes, right. That's right. That's And say God told them to do it. Yeah. So folks, instead of being still and being taught, they got lifted up or whatever, they get, they, they, they get them a following. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't wait to show you some of these guys in the Bible that did stuff like that. When Paul, when Paul, Paul, see, Paul bold and right? Paul called him by name. And I said, I, I ain't done that. Well, <laughs> maybe I have a little bit. Paul called him names. Paul called, he talked about that silversmith named Demetrius. He talked about that fellow, how, how he got in there. How he just, he just wreaked havoc in the church. Had these controlling spirits. I got four minutes, Lord Jesus. Ah, uh, yes. So, the, the, again, the allegations brothers and sisters, that Paul was trimming his message so he can gain a following. The legals, they were out to discredit the message behind his apostleship. If he was truly called by God, he would be teaching y'all to keep the law. Come on. Come on. If God was really in his message. Mm. And the main thing they had in mind, I'm going to show you this when we go a little deeper. The main thing they had in mind was circumcision. Oh, my God. That means, and I told all this before, that means that these Judaizers, when they came to town, they were hanging out in the men's restroom. You know what they were looking for? They were looking to make sure men had gotten rid of their foreskin. Now, if I'm on the Judaizer committee, you just have to fire me. Because I ain't going to hang out in the bathroom checking dudes up. I, I, I said, hey, hey, I'm going to leave the church over there. I'll leave the church over there. <laughs> uh, now, Brother Miller, you over the, you're over the circumcision committee. Go to, the, go to the men's room, and I want you to hang out in there, and I want you to watch these dudes when they rip it out. Excuse me, y'all. I'm sorry. But this is what I'm telling you. I know, I know this is what was happening. Somebody had to be on the bathroom committee. <laughs> Did you know there's a fellow in the Bible, hallelujah, named Titus and Timothy? And they, got, they began to get on the pole because one of these boys had a Greek mother and a Hebrew father. My, my. Mix them up. Lord, oh, I'm, 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 hallelujah. We're going to be versing this word, I promise you, by the time we get done. You're going to see this. So you, you'd be surprised at what folks come to church with. They ain't coming for deliverance. They're coming to spectate. Come on. All right. 
They come, some of them just gonna come just out of pure curiosity. I just wanna see what's going on over there. Yeah, that's right. I heard about y'all. Mm -hmm. I wanna come see. I wanna come see. And my counsel is come see. Come on. Come on. Cause we ain't doing nothing in the corner. That's right. Hallelujah. So my queen, I said, baby, we ain't everybody's cup of tea. Somebody's but we somebody's cup. Hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in my, in my conclusion, I'm going to quit. I ain't even close to being finished. Y'all know that. I'm trying to trim myself so I can, you know. Hallelujah. I want y'all to come back next time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, so sisters, brothers, they're accusing Paul. You trimming the message. Why? Because they're really trying to undermine this apostleship. That boy ain't no real apostle. Mm -hmm. He ain't no apostle. Because mm -hmm. he's talking against our religion. Let me tell you something about religion. Let me tell you how dangerous religion is. Mm -hmm. Whether y'all realize this or not, most of the war and the conflict in the world mm -hmm. was started by religion. Mm -hmm. If you go back in the Middle Ages mm -hmm. and study the Spanish Inquisition, mm -hmm. when you go back and study those dark ages, mm -hmm. when, you, when, you start, when you start reading about uh, Bloody Mary mm -hmm. <laughs> and the Knights Templar and all that kind of stuff, you, 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 you see some of the most vile stuff that was done in the name of Jesus. Killing folks. Religion is hostile. You know why? Because religion, law, religion ain't never freed nobody. All religion do is get you to commit to a system and it's designed. Listen to me. Listen to me. Religion is not designed to free you. Religion is designed to keep you bound. Because whenever you become religious, you're never certain whether or not you kept enough law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know Jesus died. Okay, that's good. But, but, uh-uh. No, no, no. When you say, I know Jesus died, don't put no but there. Don't put that just behind. When you say, I know Jesus died, stop right there. Get your butt out of the way. Hallelujah. They say, Jesus died, period. That's it. He died for my sin. I know Jesus died, but I got to do this. No, you don't have to do nothing but put your faith and confidence in what he did. Because if we could do it on our own, don't you know God would have kept his son in glory? Yes, he wouldn't have hung his son on the cross if he could. Hallelujah. Jesus prayed three times in the garden. Father, if it's possible, yes, sir. let this cup pass from me. Sleeping disciples supposed to have been watching with him. They sleep. Mm -hmm. At your most intense moment of life. That's when you find out who's really witchy. Yeah, yeah. Most folks you think that are witchy, they're somewhere asleep. Yeah, right. They are not, they got nonchalant attitudes. They don't even know, they're not even aware. And Jesus at his most intense, agonizing moments, crying, the Bible says it's a sweat, like drops of blood coming from him. And Father, it's possible that this cup pass. Don't you know if it would have been, if it, if it would have been any other way, that would have been the time to do it? No, that's right. He said, but nevertheless. Nevertheless. This is what is required. I'm do it. And the Bible says basically when he surrendered, when he submitted his will, that's when the angels came and ministered to him. Yeah. When the angels came and ministered to him, he looked at his disciples and told them, sleep on. Sleep on. <laughs> Go on and sleep. I don't need you to wake up with me no more. Now, mm -hmm. now I got some help. Come on now. All right. At a certain point, you got to open the door and let folks off your bus. That's All it. Right. Right. At a certain point, when you become, whenever you become uh, rested and hallelujah and resolved. That's what I'm looking for. When you become resolved in the revelation of what Jesus has done for you, that's when you open the door and let religious folks off your bus. It. It's time to unload religion. Unload. We got a relationship. It. It's not about religion. It's not about you trying to keep law. I'm, not, I'm just trying to be good enough. It'll never happen. Be never, never be Can't be good enough. Right. The only thing Lord. God accepts is perfection. Who is that? Which one of us are perfect? No. None of us. No. There's only one who's perfect. That's the one we're in. Yes, we're in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. He is my perfection, yes. not me. Yes. He is. And this is why I made the statement that I made the other day. Don't let perfection become the enemy of progress. You're in Christ. That means as far as God's concerned, when he looks at you, he don't see you. He sees Christ. Yes. You are accepted in the beloved. Yes. Now don't let anybody come in here 
No, they coming in here. I promise you that long as there's breath in this body. <laughs> but don't let anybody come to your to, to, to you and try to tell you, I know what Mimo said, but she got to have this too. No. I know the Bible said it, but you know, a lot of people that or you know the Bible has been added to. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the some of the original call it the apocryphal books. Apocryphal. Apocryphal means it. You know, some, some of those books have been deleted from the Bible. You know, the Catholics did this, and the mm -hmm. Catholics took away from the canon of the scripture. Back in 300, 300 AD when they had the council of that, they take you through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Why? To try to discredit the truth. It's the same lie the serpent told Eve in the garden. Did God really say? All right, all right. And finally, last conclusion for real this time. 735. The devil has no new tricks. All he got is some good dressed up old stuff. Yeah. He got the same life, but it's just been repackaged. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's the same song, but it's the second verse. <laughs> he, he, he lied that just, like, just like he lied this. The Bible says he was a liar from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing to me. You know, sometimes people have trouble believing little lies, but they can believe the big ones. Mm -hmm. Adolf Hitler said that. Mm -hmm. Adolf Hitler says, make sure when you lie, lie big. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler said that. Make sure you lie big. And, and, and make sure you lie repetitively. Don't just say it one time. Keep saying it. Like somehow that if you keep saying it, somehow that a lie just miraculously become the truth. You just got to keep saying it. If you keep saying it, make it big enough. After a while, the masses, it'll become palatable. And all of a sudden, people will say yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how the third right was started. Mm -hmm. And Hitler almost, he almost took the world. Did you know that? Yes, Did you know how close Adolf came to? Controlling everything. Yep. Ooh, boy. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Yes, God bless your face for all We love y'all. Thank y'all for joining in with us. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Don't, don't close it yet. Let me get in this camera. I know Pastor said some tough stuff tonight. Mm. I know some of it was a little hard to digest. But I want you to meditate. Before you, before you just discount it and throw it away, I want you to go back and listen to what I told you. Get the word. Mm. And study the word. Let the Bible be your final conclusion. Yes, yes, yes. Don't worry about the words of men, including this man that's looking at you on camera. Get to the scripture and let the scripture be your final conclusion. Yes, Amen? That's what I want you to do, Facebook family. Keep to those of you that we got some faithful followers. We've got people that follow us every week. Yes. I want you to continue to tune in because I'm going to continue to build my case like a good attorney. Hallelujah. Right. I want to continue to build this and continue speaking the truth until you become settled and confident in the truth of the word. Amen. Because God, hallelujah, it grieves the heart of God and God is tired of his people being lied to. Yes. Amen. That's just Amen. the truth though. He's it grieves the spirit of God. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord, for those that are joining us on Facebook Live. Thank you, Lord, for the precious brothers and sisters and family that's in the house. Lord, I speak the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood right now over every person under the sound of this voice. God, we plead the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus covers right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for the prevailing power of the truth. Hallelujah. Because Jesus, you said in John's gospel, John chapter 8, verse 32, you said we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. Amen. So yeah. tonight, Lord, thank you for the liberating power of truth. Thank you, Lord. We just give you praise tonight, yes. Lord. Continue to bless my brothers and sisters yes. in this house, Lord. Yes. Continue to bless the members of this church. Continue yes. to bless our Facebook audience. God, just look on the churches in this community. Oh, God, we just pray for the entire city of Blackshire. We pray we pray for the county of Pierce. We pray for Ware County. God, we just pray for the whole southeast Georgia region. Even reach down to North Florida, God. We pray now, Father. And I ask you, Lord, I speak this word. I say, let God arise. So every enemy will be scattered. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, right now for healing. You need healing, receive your healing right now. You need a touch in your physical body, receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because healing is in the atonement. Yes. And Father, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. We decree and declare wholeness, not yes. just healing, yes. but I speak a word of wholeness. Yes. Right now, go across these airwaves. Yes. Go across this streamcast, this live streamcast, Lord. You, Lord. Hallelujah, God. And touch your people to that, Lord. Right. We thank you for doing it. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, 
we pray and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you.